and we are recording. So let's talk about Koji. Uh, just pandering to the audience here. Uh, raise your hand if you use Koji. Now, uh, raise your hand if you have run a Koji instance or installed a Koji instance. All right. Raise your hand if you want to pull your hair out. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Um, so, Koji's been around for a while. Uh, let me start it out real quick for those of you who haven't met me before. Hi, I'm Mike. Hi, I'm Mike. Hi, I'm Mike. Uh, <laughs> and I have been. <laughs> yes. Far too long. Far too long, yes. Uh, I, with Red Hat since 2001. Not as long as some people in this room, but it's been a while. Um, I, I actually wrote most of Koji, most of the core stuff uh, is, is sitting up there. Uh, I'm not the only person that, 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 that worked on Koji. There are lots of other people. I don't mean to uh, uh, minimize the other work that, that people have done. Uh, but uh, I work for the release configuration management team at Red Hat. But everybody calls us release engineering because that's what we used to call ourselves. And uh, in a long time ago, I actually worked on installer QA. Past life, I was I was doing that stuff. Uh, you can find me in Fedora, Mike M on Green Nose, Mike M, and Red Hat, Mike M, and uh, a few other places, Mike M, the variations like that. Um, you guys all know, know about Koji. Um, uh, you may not realize that a lot of other people use Koji besides uh, Fedora. bunch more. If you go to the uh, Koji, uh, Koji's product, uh, project page and look at the run to your page, there's, there's a list and that's almost certainly not all. That's just self-reporting. So Koji's kind of old. I wrote the first line of code more than 10 years ago. And uh, it wasn't initially public. We, it was internal only at Red Hat for a while. And Build Fedora Core 6 when we were still building Fedora Core, si Fedora Core inside of Red Hat's walls before we merged in extras. Uh, if anybody remembers that <laughs> shameful past. Uh, we publicly released it in 2007 so that Fedora could use it for its build system. And that's when it became called Koji. Before that, there was no such thing as Koji. Well, there was, but we used to use it to make sake. And uh, if you want to read more about this, I don't want to go while into the history, but uh, there's an article that I wrote for opensource.com oh, a few years ago. Uh, Google Free is the topic. Uh, there's a link. Also, stop me if you have questions because I love answering questions. Um, I mentioned before, there's plenty of pain points in Koji. Uh, you've felt them, I've felt them. Um, and they're not all Koji itself. Uh, limited documentation is one of the big ones. getting old. Uh, I, I'm lying here. I, I say it's written for Python. That's currently. It's currently written for Python 3.3. It's currently written to run on RHEL 5. Um, yeah, when we initially wrote it, it was written to run on RHEL 4. Seemed like a good idea at the time. Uh, <laughs> at the time, we only cared about RPMs. Uh, very shortly after, afterwards, we started caring about more than that. But uh, the uh, Koji is very RPM centric. We've we've added on features for other things that aren't RPMs, but they do have a little bit of a bolted on feel. Um, and that's just because it, the basic data structures in there weren't quite written with other stuff in mind. Um, it can be a pain. To deploy initially, see you in notes about limited documentation. And there's a number of restrictions that made a lot of sense when you were writing a build when we were writing a build system to build RPMs for a Linux distro. 
but some of those restrictions don't necessarily make sense in all workflows, but they're kind of hard to get around when there are um, unique key constraints on the database. Uh, so there are pain points. Don't get me wrong, I love Koji, but it's got its problems. Um, and we're facing new challenges. Um, .next, whatever .next you care about, .next is going to be a challenge. Uh, we care about more than just RPMs now. That's been true for a while, uh, but it's getting worse and worse. It's not worse and worse. It's getting more so and more so. Um, uh, the workflows in Koji can be sort of a hassle. I, I hear, uh, I, I do hear regular complaints that uh, uh, it can be uh, Koji can get in the way sometimes of relative getting the work done. So we have to look at that. But uh, persistence integration is. Koji is not a persistence integration system. Probably never will be, but it could really play nicer with systems to do that sort of thing. And overall, we have more people using Koji than we ever did before, than we ever thought we would, so they have different needs. So Koji needs to grow and change to adapt. So over the years, we've sort of talked about things we'd like to do. And, and said, well, that would be nice, but if we do that, we're gonna have to change everything from uh, change deep core stuff in the database, make for a heck of a migration. So we'll push that off to 2.0. And pretty soon you realize you have to try and do 2.0. So we're, we're doing 2.0, let's do 2.0. Um, I, we posted a draft roadmap to Koji to Bell list. Uh, last. Um, there's a link to the very first email to Coaching <laughs> Bellis. <laughs> As you can tell from the URL there. Uh, then we discussed it more at the Fedora Activity Day that we had in June. And the conversation is still going. If you're interested in Koji 2.0, if uh, you, you are interested in the future directions of Koji, then now is a good time to hop on a list or talk to me or talk to other people and make your voice heard because So let's talk about what we'd like to see in Koji. And I can't talk, about, I, I don't think I have time to talk about everything I'd like to talk about, everything that we'd like to do, but the, I'm trying to go over some of the highlights. So at a high level, feel like that is a, uh, and I'm, I'm not just giving that lip service here, I really feel like that's a big barrier to entry for Koji, not just for people to use it, but for people to deploy it and for people to contribute code. So, so I, I'm take, I, I want to take that top one seriously, that's one of the reasons it's top, we need better documentation. Um, I'm going to write some, uh, if you have expertise, I would love to see contributions, uh, even if it's just even if it's not something you wrote, even if it's something that you found helpful, that you could point me at and say, hey, this is much better than that stuff you have on your website. Why, why can't we use that instead? Uh, more community involvement. Uh, I think that these two are related. Um, we, uh, we've gotten some uh, very helpful patches from the community definitely gotten very helpful feedback from the community, but I, I, I want more. There's a lot of work to do for Koji 2.0, and I can't do it all myself. Uh, or I could, but then Koji 2.0 will not be on time. <laughs> uh, as I mentioned, Koji is uh, getting a little gray around the muzzle, uh, so it's time to refactor a lot of code. about Python than I do. Uh, we need to modernize, we need to get rid of some old, uh, some old de dependencies that don't make sense anymore. Uh, I'd like to have, yes, thank you. Um, so for the refactor and modern, uh, modernization of your code, is there a particular target release of Python you're aiming for? 
I'll get to that. Um, so because we still care about um, uh, some older rel releases to some extent, uh, we can't just target Python 3. You know, as you pointed out, even rel 7 doesn't really have Python 3. So, uh, so the, the document, the email document for the uh, page is pointing out there's 2.6. Uh, is there any reason not to do 2.7? I think that's what it's in rel 6. Yeah, because I, I pro probably, pro I, I think I picked 2.6 because of rel 6. Rel 6 has a, has a bit of life left in it. And uh, well, my person, the, the Koji instance I care most about uses a lot of rel 6 still, and that's not likely to change. Yeah? You could be targeting Koji and not trying to compare it to this other version too, and you could have an option to not target it. That is a possibility. But uh, there's a lot of code that needs to run all these places. There's a lot of code that's, gonna, that's used all over. So, so for that code, I think 2.6 plus, plus one of the adaption layers is really the way to go. But I think we have that covered in another there's slide. There's one thing so. that I would like to not sure yeah. we'll see. Okay, let the backend be in whichever version of Python. But provide client support for Python 3. Because nowadays, if I want to write code that will interact with Koji, I can do it to Python 2. Well, we will certainly have that. Yes. We will certainly support Python 3. But we're just doing it in a way so that we don't cease to support Python 2. And that's a bit of a, uh, it's a bit of a trade-off because if you support both Python 2 and Python 3 at the same time, you are sort of saying, hey, there's all these really great features in Python 3 that I am just not going to use because Mostly violent agreement here. <laughs> There's uh, another thing is um, if you could if you target 2.6, you know, certain rel scripts that are unrelated to the rel five and three, then I have to really get to that point. Do you have any helpful reason why you? Okay. Well, so in five years, yeah. in five years, well, I'm hoping that we'll be talking about Koji 3.0, if not already. Processes, and I'll get to what that means a little later. Uh, but right now, we mostly support, what do we support right now? We support uh, building RPMs with mock, building jars with Maven, building images with Image Factory. throw out a family feud reference with deprecated, but I don't know if everybody gets that reference, so all right. <laughs> um, but yes, we, we, but each of those different types of builds have been sort of difficult to add into Koji, and they've always sort of felt bolted on. Um, in the R, in the R. Yeah, the, 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 the schema is built around RPMs again, so, uh, so we want to try to open that up. We'll get more into what that means a little later. Different types of build output related. If you have a different build process, it might produce a different type of output. Um, hardwired restrictions need to be more configurable. 
uh, for example, um, the NVR uniqueness if you have such a thing. There are plenty of workflows where NVR uniqueness makes no sense. For example, if you are doing core CentOS build system and you need to rebuild the same NVR over and over and over again until you get it right. Or if you're doing a CI system and you rebuild the same NVR over and over and over again until you get it right. or various other uh, access controls that are just hardwired to be a certain way and you can't really change, so you can't let this user do, do this. Uh, garbage collection, if you want to, if you say, I don't really care about keeping all, this refer all these reference builds around because I don't really care about reproducing build groups from five years ago, then well, you can't do that. GC one? No. Uh, oh, oh, the NVR one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, if you not, can you be non builder with that and that only be your demo? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to pretend I have solutions to all of these. This is still planning. Um, we want to make it easier to deploy. Um, having better docs would get, get that started, but also it'd be, uh, uh, be nice to just have fewer steps in between getting the code on your server and getting the system running. Uh, it, it doesn't, it, it, there's lots of little knobs and configuration files to twiddle. Um, it would be nice to just be able to get it started. I know that there are ways that you have to do that. But, uh, uh, better QA process, which would mean uh, a QA process, <laughs> which is not true, not true. I, I, I do a lot of testing myself, but I don't, really know who else does and it's not one of us. Yeah, we kind of need CI for coaching. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and better release process because uh, we don't really formalize it. Uh, well, we do. I mean, I put out formal releases, but they're, they've if you look at the history of them, they've gotten further and further apart. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's not the best. Um, so, all right. I will talk about scratch builds later. <laughs> in 2.0 that um, talk about. So Python 3 support. See, I told you there was a slot. Uh, and I guess you were looking ahead before you saw that. Thing. Uh, as I said, older systems don't matter. My plan right now is to target to Python 2.6 and, and use Python 6 uh, as a glue library to sort of make it work all, all places. That's not set in stone. If there's a giant upswelling of people saying, no, 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 two seven, then well, we can, we can talk about that. Um, and me personally, I'm not gonna stop caring, caring about rel five immediately. So I'm probably still gonna have some sort of basic client lib uh, that will work on an older Python. That's just gonna be separate. It's gonna. We're not gonna try to migrate everything over and have it be part of that really long migration plan. Like, it'll be it'll be a complicated it'll, complicated migration. I, I I'm not saying we won't. Mi I don't. I think we'll be able to migrate the data. Uh, it might not be as clean a migration as you'd like. I mean, it's the difference between migrating from. I don't know, say migrating from uh, Mercurial to Git versus migrating from Git to CVS <laughs> or, you know, or, 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 or I don't know. I don't know what. Sometimes it's so important not, yeah. not run the tool on the data. Yes, it's, it's, whereas right now all our migrations so far have been here. Apply this relatively pain, painless schema update. 
Uh, sometimes they take a while because they update a big table, but you know, I've never remember them ever taking more than 20 minutes on my slow ser on my slow server. So uh, whereas, and it's just just SQL code. Whereas the the migration for this will probably be a Python application that reads in your database and does a whole lot of calculation to figure out how this data mapped to this data. Probably tracing through the probably tracing through the entire history that's that's in the Koji database and rewriting that in the new history in, as new history in memory. Uh, will be pain not to that, right? Uh, right. Well, and that's that's me. You know, I, I that you know, the Koji instances I care about. I don't want to throw away the history. Other people may be be fine with saying, okay, well, here's our new code. Here's our new Koji two instance. Start building here. It's empty, have fun. <laughs> um, so were there any, I, I, I sort of punted Python 3 conversations before. Is, is there anything left there that people need to uh, get off their chest? All right, awesome. Yay. <laughs> I, I think that says it all. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we, we figure we're going to have a call center. <laughs> Builders would just, we'll subcontract it out, and they'll, they'll do manual data entry. Uh, no, uh, I, I, I like JSON. I, I, I think it, we'll, we'll do it, uh, some sort of JSON-based RPC. Um, exactly what form that takes is a matter of discussion. I'm open to suggestions. I'm open to argument there, um, but, and I really hope we can dodge having to write some sort of external RPC compat thing for this, because I don't want to do it, yeah. but if anybody out there has like a giant ton of scripts that they think they, they can't port and just have to work, then, well, you're probably on your own, but. <laughs> 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 All right. Build namespaces. Uh, there's actually a, a partial implementation of this out there. Um, one of the where this gets painful is not so much adding a namespace field in the database. That's pretty easy to do. Add a namespace field, tweak the uses condition. The problem is that we have this file file system layout in Koji where we go mount Koji packages RPM name version release. So as soon as you do this, the that path isn't used anymore. So we have to change it, and I feel like that's a pretty big deal. Changing the file path. I have a um, the, the patch that I have, which is experimental and buggy stuff like that, uh, preserves the namespace for uh, the, def preserves that file system, file path for the default namespace, namespace zero. So as long as you're namespace zero, if you're only using that one namespace, then it works just like it did before. Uh, but when you move anything to another namespace, So we talk, I touched on this before, it's useful for, uh, for a number of workflows and useful for anybody that cares about not having any other namespace. An interesting side effect of this is, uh, uh, depending on how you implement it, the implementation I have allows for the namespace to be null. And when the namespace is null, um, you can just, they're like, they're like bosons. You can just cram as many in the null namespace as, as you want. So, uh, so scratch builds would become Null namespace builds, which would mean that a scratch build could be moved to a namespace and then cease to be a scratch build, which is an interesting thing that people have been. Right, and 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 because because the way that this would work, and we'd have. It would be a real build, just in a null namespace. So you'd have all the same metadata 
But scratch builds are already just like regular builds, except they don't get imported. This would actually import them into the null namespace. And well, and you have to, yeah, the garbage collection has to account for this. You probably have um, you, default garbage collection rules would probably be very aggressive about null namespace rules. But you could save that, do it without null namespace, and boom, it's a real build again. Like, it's a real boy, like Pinocchio. Um, so I, I can get more. Uh, th that's, no, 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 no. So uh, before, before I go on to the next thing, does that make sense? Does anybody have any burning questions about what name spaces? Uh, and actually, I have, uh, there's an interesting open question here, which I, uh, I, don't, I don't yet feel like I'm 100% sure on the answer to, and that is this. Uh, does it make sense, once you have multiple name spaces, for a build to occupy, for a single build to occupy the same NVR in multiple A namespace is just just a namespace. It's just it's just a just an extra key in a uniqueness condition. Sure, but we it can replace task and tell Can you have namespace for Dora only Dora twenty three? So I don't think you want to you don't think you want to you don't think you want to mix those up, although one thing we do I do have in the implementation is that a that, that a, a tag has a tag has a namespace associated with it and that and what that means is that The default namespace that the build gets if it's not a scratch build. Because uh, like in one in one moment you could get totally you can have tags and namespaces and you'd be like, okay, you could you could make your build to names some namespace or some tag or So here's the thing. Uh, right now we have builds in in Doji that uh, are multiply tagged. It, it happens all the time. Yet in, in namespaces, it's not clear whether or not we should have them multiply namespaced. Um, and when we have builds multiply tagged, often we really do want those to be the same, live in the na same namespace. You know what I'm saying? We don't necessarily want the namespace to be. Um, you may have a whole set of tags. Uh, how do we, how do we do? Uh, for, let's say you've got uh, Fedora 37. <laughs> uh, well, no, let's, let's be more ambitious. Uh, Fedora uh, 25. Say so you have Fedora 20, uh, set of Fedora 25 tags. You might have candidate tag, override tag, build tag, uh, and you don't want to have to be in the in the position of having the same having the same NV, different builds occupy the same NVR in those very related tags. So they are separate things. It's a, it's a tricky thing to introduce this. There's, it opens up a lot of questions. It's, it's a little bit of a can of worms, but I think we, I really think we need to have it. Uh, another open question is this. Do we actually need more than one namespace? Depends, depends on what you want to do. I think in Fedora, we might not. It might be enough to have named and null. Well, null is not it's so not much not a namespace as lack of a namespace. It's not not. <laughs> <laughs> well, so so a Coper workflow, if you wanted to use, say, Koji as a backend for, for an organizational backend for Coper, mm -hmm. then then yes, you want multiple namespaces. You want each each Coper to have have its own namespace. Yeah. Well,
Uh, I mean, I'm just. <laughs> Yes, yes, that would, that would be one. Namespace would definitely be one of the factors that drive instruction on the drive. And we would definitely need SSDs uh, for that as uh, you know. So, uh, I don't, no. Nope. All right, so let's talk about content generators. This is a big one. Uh, and uh, might not be obvious to, to everybody what it means. Uh, content generators is actually not a Koji 2.0 feature, it's a Koji 1.11 feature. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yes. Well, they don't know what it is yet, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but in 2.0, I, I want to really embrace content generators. And so let me tell you what content generators are. Content generators means in a nutshell, a mechanism in Koji to allow uh, something that isn't Koji to act as a, 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 as a build source. So it, it, in a sense, it's a glorified import. Uh, so uh, as we grow and handle different types of build processes and different types of workflows, you may have cases where somebody needs to just have a radically different system for creating builds would still want to have that get into Koji for tracking, garbage collection, shipping, releasing, et cetera. Can you just say the build? Yes. That, I mean, at, at, an, at an extreme. Now, I'm not going to guess at what all people might want to use this for, but yes, that's a distinct possibility. That, uh, uh, but it's not, we're trying not to make it a free for all. The idea here is, and I'm just going to read the text robust metadata import. The idea is to sort of hold these content generators to some sort of standard that, that matches what we sort of expect from Koji. That is, is that it's not, you're not just chucking a bunch of files onto, into a database and saying, here, I built this, have some devs and some logs and be done with it. Uh, the, 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 the metadata format is actually, you can look at the, the link later if you're interested, uh, specifies details about the build environment, uh, mappings between uh, the, the contents in the build, how, which build environment it was built in, and uh, which content gener generator built it, et cetera. It's, uh, it's a complex, robust <coughs> metadata import that is on, that's similar in some ways, more robust than what Koji is currently doing now when it imports builds. So, right now, when we imported 111, uh, we're going to have this added on as a new set of hub calls that allows a content generator to, to do these sort of imports. And so somebody could write a content generator, people are already writing content generators in some cases, and, um, and, and do that. In 2.0, I want um, everything in Koji that generates builds to use the same sort of the same import calls and use the same use the same data structure. So I want it unified in 2.0. We won't have that in 1.11, but that's that's what we'll have in 2.0. Um, when you look at the Koji 2.0 package, there's also the internal bundle generator. Is that Koji? S say again. Well, say like Koji, like it's packaging is part of Koji 2.0, but there's a package that goes with it. Right, right. In a sense. Right. Literally, yes. CoGD would become a native, a native Koji content generator. Exactly. So, is it the, the reciprocal of that as well? Can you have a, a, a export method along those lines? Can, can you say Koji picks up a, a, a this is one of it that generates metadata for? Well, I mean, technically, um, <laughs> right. A Koji instance could serve as a content generator for another Koji instance. If you set that up, yes. Now, you may or may not want to do that. Uh, the, 
Koji Federation is one of those line items on the wish list that I do not have in the slides, but is definitely something well, that you would like. More like, like get rid of, uh, of, of, of make that package wrap radically simpler by making it pop six. I got two well known git repos. One of which is the input, one of which is the output, and make it instead of six clear git commands directly instead of six as a bird. I'm not quite uh, following, but. I'll My IQ drops with every slide, so uh, <laughs> just uh, um, where was I with my oh, I better hurry. Uh, Unify build types right now. I think touched on this before. We have a bunch of different build types: um, RPM builds, which were the original build type, and we also have Maven builds, Windows builds, which everybody realizes is there. Uh, don't don't ask me how to do it. <laughs> It's in the code. Uh, it's off by default. Um, you have to turn it on. It's not on in, in, in Fedora's. Uh, also, it's built and whatever else might come up in the future. Um, right now, these are all sort of handled separately. RPM builds are very different from the other three. The other three are sort of unified, but it's all still a little awkward. And adding new ones is still feels even more awkward. So I want to have it more unified um, and because we're going to have more. We know we're going to have more. Uh, one of the things that I was debating about uh, when I initially did the, uh, the, the roadmap, because I wasn't sure about this, but then it became very clear during the Fedora Activity Day that this is pretty much probably what should be the key here. It seems like a must have is for Koji to grow a message bus. And that does not mean, uh, that's not the same as Koji talking on Fed message, because Koji already talks on Fed message. Plugin that does just that. Uh, this means Koji has its own message bus. And why would Koji want its own message bus? Because right now Koji does a lot of pull. Every time you every time you run a build in Koji, your client is sitting there going, "Hey Koji, what's happening with this build? Hey Koji, what's happening with this build?" Instead, it could get on message bus and say, "Hey, tell me when something happens on this build." Similarly, with all the builders, they're doing something very similar. They're pulling all the time. So let's distinguish between the Fed message software and the Fed message instance. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm specifically speaking about the Fed message software. Okay, so it, it may well be the Fed, Fed message software, yes. Necessarily have to do scheduling in the same way that uh, we don't. We pr probably won't do scheduling the same way that we have that we have been. Uh, the, the sort of ad hoc uh, fair race that the Koji Beam currently does, Koji Beam instance currently do to decide who gets what task is probably going to go away too. I don't really have a problem with that. Uh, so this is something that I have uh, much less uh, of a sense of what it's going to look like in the end than some of the others. But I feel like, but, but it became very clear to me that, it, that something like this has to happen. So I think it's going to happen. Uh, it may or may not be fed message or new or unfused, but it will be, it will be a message bus because we, we really do have to get rid of so many things and get rid of the pull. And it will make people a lot happier because uh, you'll get much better responsiveness out of the client, much better responsiveness out of the builders, which you won't have to wait 30 seconds for a builder to notice that it has a task assigned to it. Yeah, I, 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 I'll touch on that in a minute. Uh, but yes, I, I do, the, 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 the scheduler needs some help. It's, it's, it's just not smart enough. And the only way it's going to get smart is if you centralize it. Um, plugins, we already have plugins in Koji. We have plugins for the hub, plugins for the builder. Um, 
We have themes for the web UI, but no plugins. So I want plugins in more places. I want them done clean, cleaner and consistently and more Pythonically. Uh, and because we need to, people need to extend this, and it needs to be done in, in, in a reasonable and documented way. Um, so still more. I can't. Like I said, I can't. I can't go over everything we want to do. And um, and there you go. Smart task schedule. Uh, modular authentication. Right now, we support multiple types of authentication. But if you wanted to add a new one, it would be hard. <laughs> uh, I'm not. I know that the some people in this room would really like to have Cody support Open ID. Web UI could use a lot of updates. Yeah, you need <laughs> to sort of for example, code slash bin slash number. Yeah. Code bin slash package slash code bin. Yeah. Well, and more to the point, things like they have file updates for the disk that yeah. I build them. Yeah. Yeah. And that's <coughs> what sort of thing where it it matters a lot to you. Yeah. That's the front face for a lot of people for Koji. Not for me. I just need the command line. <laughs> but, uh, uh, <laughs> but I have very little to do with the Twitter plugin. I mean, we, we could write the Twitter plugin tomorrow. We don't need 2.0 to have a Twitter plugin. <laughs> Transient dynamic builders uh, would mean that it would be make it easier to set up uh, set up and tear down builders in a cloud without. Right now, setting up a builder is kind of heavy duty because you have to add it to the database, you have to get credentials, you have to do all these things. Uh, transient dynamic builder would probably take the shape of a content generator that is spinning. Uh, spinning off these transient dynamic builders and acting as a proxy as a to talk between the, those and Koji directly. Not unlike how Coper does things actually. The SSL off, you mean? Well, the, 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 the SSL is the SSL. Uh, uh, the SSL is Well, sure. If, 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 you, if we make it easier to add more authentication methods, we probably will add more. I, yeah, I'd love to add more authentication methods. Uh, SSL, using SSL searches, it feels a little clunky, sure. So we don't have to do it that way. Uh, I, it, 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 it would be, it would be, that would be, and that, that would dovetail nicely into the make it easier to set up an instance because one of the big pain points when you're setting up a new Koji instance is you're either going to set up a whole Kerberos infrastructure to do your authentication, which is not trivial unless you already have one and then it's easy. Uh, or you 
go you, or you plow through the SSL docs and try to figure out how to set up the keys and, and then you have to have a system for handing them out, which Koji doesn't have. So kind of a pain. Well, well, yeah, if you want to use the password, you can do that too. <laughs> uh, normally, normally I just do, for my own instances, I just do SSL. Once you do the little bit of legwork of, of, of creating and or stealing a few, a few scripts to set them up, it's not too bad. SSL for auth because Plague used SSL for auth. I mean, that's a, when originally Koji was purely in, was the, the software was purely internal to Red Hat, and the only and only, it did not support SSL auth. It, we used Kerberos because that's what we had inside of Red Hat. That was it, Kerberos. Period. When Fedora adopted Koji and we released it under open source license, one of the very first things we did was had SSL auth support. And that code hasn't really changed much since then. And yeah. <laughs> so totally open to new authentication methods, yes. Um, so is this ambitious? Yes, it's very ambitious, but it needs to be done and I think we can do it. And um, some of the things that we, some of the things that we've gone through in the list do not necessarily have to fully land in 2.0. Uh, 2.0 will have many releases. 2.0, 2.1, 2.2, many happy releases. Uh, so, so some of these features may be a little small at the beginning, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but we'll, we'll get them over. But the important thing is to build the framework to make the big core changes to Koji that we need to do the big shaking up one time and not have to do it again for a few years so that we can build incrementally from there. So that's, but it is ambitious and that's why I need your help. So here's how I'd help. Uh, if you're interested in helping, join the Koji Devel mailing list on, it's a, it's a Fedora Projects mailing list, not a Fedora, what? It's a, it's, sorry, it's a Fedora, you're right, it's a Fedora hosted mailing list, not a Fedora Projects mailing list. Uh, so we need, we need everything. We, we need coding, we need testing, we need docs, we need feedback. Uh, really, anything you want to give. Uh, snide comments, that's fine too. What do you want? <laughs> so, uh, questions can, can be answered. Um, that's, a, that's a tricky question. It depends on, um, it depends on that. <laughs> right, right. It's early. It's, it's early. We're still planning. As I said, uh, all of this is specious. Uh, there, some some of it has code written. A lot of it does not. Um, some of it, I feel like I could write myself, without, if with given sufficient time, which isn't always easy when you have a day job. <laughs> that only cares about one Koji instance, not, not 10 of them. Um, but, uh, and then, so, I mean, um, are you heading up the way one of the tabs in the project? It, it, if, well, if, if, if we're back here again next summer, and I don't, and I don't have something, and I don't have something on a Koji 2.0 branch that you can run, now I wouldn't, Maybe call it shit, but if, if I don't have something workable, if we don't have something workable by within the year, I'll be very disappointed. So that's that's the does that help? Is that is that a guidance? Um, we're not going to drop the 1.x line very quickly because a lot of people depend on that, and the migration is going to be tough. Even once we have 2.0 working, uh, we'll probably keep 1.x. For a little while because 
It's, no, it's, this is not a from scratch rewrite, it's, but it's gonna be a big, a lot of code's gonna change. But uh, I, I, I'm a believer in not throwing out the accumulated uh, knowledge of 10 years of, of the build system. So, uh, so we wanna be careful not to, not to throw out the smarts. Koji 1.11, ballpark October. in on itself a little bit. I think it's the, <coughs> because it's 10 times the code size of Koji, <laughs> and it's written in three different languages, and, and the, 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 the docs look nice until you try to read them. Um, <laughs> I'm like, oh hey, it has docs, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, not that I should cast any stones about docs, so the thing is that, uh, that OBS, as I understand it, and feel free to correct me because I'm sure very likely somebody in here understands OBS way better than I do, but as I understand it, OBS is a very different sort of build system than Koji. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it has a lot of cross-compiling, which is cool. sort of uh, quite the level of organizational structure that Koji does, maybe not quite the level of, of data interconnectedness that Koji does. Yeah. Yeah. We probably have a lot of things which Koji doesn't need. Right, there's that too. But here's an interesting idea. Could OBS be a content generator? yourself very much <laughs> and you wanted to turn that turn turn it into a content generator then that's a possibility um, I, I mean I think like a, a real I guess concrete situation right if somebody were to come across an IRB panel and say why don't you use this thing I think a, a proper answer to that is it doesn't it doesn't cater to certain requirements that we have on uh, reproducibility So, uh, th thank you. Uh, were you holding up a <laughs> were you holding up a flag that I was supposed to notice? Okay. So, luckily, that is my last slide. So. <laughs> so, uh, you mentioned reproducibility. Uh, I am giving another talk at two thirty on reproducibility in Koji. So if you're interested in that, you can come to that and learn about what we do and what that means. Thanks, guys. Oh, and do I pause this?